Chuck, and I appreciate uh, you stopping by the shop for another video. Um, recently, I did a video on the um, spindle stop uh, for, that I made for the 10 E. Uh, I 3D printed it. Well, this is another stop that I've built. Um, this one is for my closing, and this one's used for the chuck. Uh, with the three jaw chuck in place, you can go ahead and have a stop to uh, have the pieces go against. So we have a unit right here that the, fits in the front of the closing, the taper on the closing, a long bolt, and then there's a, a nut here to go ahead and secure it once it's in place. And basically you reach in the back of the spindle with an extension and a 9 16th wrench and you can go ahead and extend the rod out the front of the stop here. I guess I should have done that earlier, huh? It's got a ways to go. Come on. There it comes. So this comes out of the front of the stop. I'll mount it in the, uh, in the chuck so you can see it in use. And then I made this long bar and you can see it's got the teeth on it, the, the dogs, I guess. So I can reach in from the back of the spindle, grab that nut, tighten that nut against the stop, which locks, uh, not, not, tighten the nut against the back of the fixture here, which locks the stop in place. Um, works well. So uh, let me go uh, set it up in the... Uh, in the lathe, I think I can do that and show you. Did a nice little knurl on the uh, back side here. And uh, let's take it over there and we'll uh, try a peek on that. Secondly, I've got a little uh, little item I want to show you that's not related to this at the uh, end of the video. So stick around for that. Okay, we're over here at the lathe. Um, this lathe is a uh, closing uh, 6913. So there's the uh, fixture I made, and you can see I have the thread sticking out some. And so since this is the taper that's in the back of the spindle here, just slide it in, get it to lock, which it just did, that little bit of sliding. And now I have the ability for a stop on my part. We'll leave the uh, part right there. And if I go into the back with a wrench, Make sure I'm heading the right way. So I got a 9 16th uh, socket there. If I can get it on the uh, part. So we got the socket on the back of the long bolt there, and you can probably see it coming out. All right, I'm at the other side of the lathe here, but I assume you can see it turning. And again, the, the stop would be adjustable. Turn it the other way, and the stop, stop adjust back. Once the stop is in the correct location, basically it would go in with this tool and tighten that jam nut so that the stop is in a locked position. Once it's that way, you can interchange parts and have the part go into the chuck the same depth every time. Of course, it can come all the way out further and have it, if you had the uh, parts uh, that you needed to push off onto the chuck fingers, uh, you, you could do that also, the chuck jaws, excuse me. So anyway, it's a uh, tool that I built some time ago. Um, it's handy when you need it. I don't do that much multiples, uh, but it's uh, here in the uh, arsenal, as we said the other day. I just wanted to show another use of this stop would be if I'm using the ER32 collet, you load from the front so that the ER32 collet could be sitting here in the chuck. And the stop can come up into the chuck and act as a, uh, a stop for anything that I slide back and forth in there. The Dependent upon the size of the collet that you're using, of course the tip of the stop in there 
could be extended basically with a nut and a special piece on there. So you could actually get into very small holes and have repeatability using the ER32. And of course just to close this out, to get the uh, stop back out from the back side with just a bar, give it a pop and the taper releases. So I hope you uh, found this interesting and uh, helpful. It's something you might build for your own uh, lathe. Well, I hope you stuck around. These are the two items I want to just chat with real quick. Um, you know, a lot of us have the machinery handbook, right? Lots, lots of information in that book. Well, this little practical guide is quite, quite amazing. I don't know when it was produced, the year, the year that it uh, was done. It's not uh, anything recent, but the amount of information in here, um, the table of contents, cutters, dies, drills, reamers, taps, screws, tool bits, speeds and feeds, tapers, general, allowance for fits, hardness conversion, on and on and on. All the information, tons of information in this little booklet. Just amazing. I love it. But this one, this is the one that uh, just butters my bread, I guess. Um, the Derrick's uh, Gauge Dial, copyrighted by James Derrick, um, cost 50 cents back in the day. So when you think about it, this is the marvel about this. This is before computers. This is before calculators, uh, before CAD, all those types of things. Somebody had to lay this out and have all of the different wheels on here to read all the various information on both sides along with all the information on the back. So right here decimal equivalence is on this side and they're, they're all there and if you turn it over it's got the information for length of a key and the thickness. Just it's just quite amazing the amount of information on here. Threads per inch, double depth, longest uh, length for a pin, the size of the reamer, number drills and the decimals, letter drills, the decimals, tap sizes, uh, distance across flats. If you look at any old literature, all the books had distance across flat tables, right? So that you knew what the, uh, you didn't have a calculator to go ahead and do that for you. Anyway, I thought I would just show this. It's uh, a lot of information on this one little disc. Um, machine screws, this is all the information, threads per inch, uh, A in form, uh, f both coarse and fine, just on and on. Anyway, I thought I would just share that at the end. Just love this, this old type of literature. Okay, thanks again for uh, stopping by the channel, and I hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you again soon on a new one. And always, uh, please like, uh, share, and uh, comments are always welcome.